All right, guys, due to popular demand, we're here to go over some John Frusciante techniques. And uh, I really love his playing. He's very expressive. He's very original. And a lot of what he does is not like brand new techniques that you've never seen before, but it's most likely uh, just his way of expressing himself through what he does so well that it's really hard to reproduce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some physical techniques that he does, but like the magic that he's able to put through them uh, is his own. So what you could do is you could just learn the techniques, try them out for yourself, and maybe you'll find some magic within it yourself. That's always my goal. Um, the way he tremolo picks is really original. Um, I tremolo pick using the rotation method with my hand, so I would recommend just tremolo picking the way you do, but use it Using it in the way he does is very interesting. And to tremolo pick, you know, we're usually tremolo picking over one string, doing some fast runs or something, maybe on a couple strings at a time. But we're gonna try three strings in this case. So it's gonna be like sweeping across a chord almost. <laughs> pretty intense, you know, especially in the beginning of that song when everybody jumps in and all of a sudden it's just boom in your face and it's just up there squealing, he's just going crazy. It sounds like chaos, but it's actually very playable once you understand the fact that you have to tremolo pick multiple strings. Okay, another Frusciante trademark that I really love. He has these quirky single note clean uh, funky sounding rhythm sometimes. And we'll just stick with this kind of the same song we were talking about before around the world. and. You'll notice after he does his chaotic picking, it just totally changes and it goes into this kind of a sound where he's going. Now, I don't want to teach you guys the songs necessarily. It seems like I'm sticking to one song here, but I'm just using examples. Uh, you could do this in anywhere of the uh, any part of the neck that you want. You know, you don't have to play his riffs, but you could use that concept maybe in the middle of the neck and be like, um. So I'm using the same concept of choppy, clean sound rhythms. So you can see you can use it pretty much at your discretion, you know, write some riffs, use that kind of concept. Those type of rhythms really stick out. Number one, because you're using clean sound. There's no distortion to cover up what you're doing. And the way he plays is very staccato. Staccato just means real quick. Remember, don't try to play pretty. How, uh, most of the feel that he gets is from his very, uh, I hate to say crude, but crude way of playing certain things. So now I'm just making up riffs, but you get the idea. So try to add some short, staccato, clean riffs to your playing, and already you get that kind of funky sound, especially if you have, if you have someone like Flea playing with you. Um, they could really bounce off of each other, a bass guitar and that sort of playing. What I notice is at the end of one of the songs, he's got this really in your face chord happening here. In this case, it's a D minor. It doesn't really matter. Remember, I'm not trying to teach you the songs. But the technique of this is we're using four strings, we're playing a certain chord, and we're just doing more of a slow tremolo picking or a fast strumming pattern over the top of it. In the song, he happens to just jump up and move up. And I remember when I first learned this, I was doing just two of the notes. I think I was going like, uh... But I later realized that he adds a lot of other sounds to it, two other strings. So it brings out different harmonics, it just sounds more full, it's more interesting sounding with the different voicings. So if you start to add more, stack more notes on top of it, that's when you get that full Frusciante sound there. These are very interesting chords too. Now, when you're sliding, you know, it's not all the time that he uses a slide. In fact, I've heard him do it, you know, on a few occasions, but the way he slides is very unique in my opinion. So a particular song that he plays, he's sliding in the video. It's kind of funny. It looks like he's just doing this with his finger, kind of like that. When I slide, I put my fingers behind it to sort of deaden the strings, but I don't think he really cares about that. He's not going for perfection. Once again, that's the Frusciante thing. He's just going for capturing the emotion, the feel of the moment, I guess. But what I do recommend is using compression, and uh, in this case, he's in clean sound. So you want your nose to sustain a lot. So for example, if I use the slide now, So 
So I'm not really trying to get like a really pretty vibrato filled slide sound happening. I'm just trying to go from note to note, mostly on a single string, like I would do with one finger. Let's say if I wasn't using a slide. But if you use a slide, it's the same effect, but it's just smoother. So you get like this, like a... It's a little bit cruder than I wanted to. My uh, action's not really set up for slide on this guitar, but still it's got that frusciante kind of thing where it's a little bit jangly, but in a good way. These are basically gonna be spread out thirds, okay? So instead of playing, for example, C major, those two, we're going to take the third interval, bring it up an octave. So now you're going to be left with this sound. And as I move up, check out the sound you get. I first learned how to do that when I learned Blackbird, like everybody does when they first start guitar, they, they get really interested in this kind of sound. And when I first heard scar tissue, I realized he was using that same sort of idea. So uh, however you want to call it, there's a lot of ways to describe this, but I'm basically just taking third intervals and we're putting them across two strings. Check this out now. If we started off in F, there you get the first sound of that song. And then just play around a little bit. In, in uh, this case, he just moves to these. So we're not just doing major thirds. This would be major thirds all the way. too happy to be that song. But a combination of major and minor thirds, if you know the theory behind it, I'll just start on C here. From C to this third is a major third. So it's a C to E. If you brought the E back half a step to E flat, you would have a minor third sound. So it's got kind of more of a sad sound to it. So check it out, major, minor. So as long as you're on the fifth string and the second string, that's going to be the case as you move up. So you could play every chord you ever want on those two strings just by going like this. C major and C minor. You can move it up to D major, D minor, E major, you get the idea. And so on. In the song, he just happens to start with F major. And there's a really cool picking pattern that he's doing there. Uh, like I said before, though, we're not here to teach the song, but the technique. I use my thumb and my middle finger if I'm doing this, because I really like the sound of my thumb hitting the string instead of my pick. But you can use your pick as well. It's more of a biting sound, which is cool too. So you see how I'm Travis picking? That's where you take your pick and play one string and your middle finger, or another finger, I should say, and just play the higher string. It could take chords that are usually just kind of regular, maybe boring, and spice them up by just presenting them in a new way that's pretty interesting. All right, I heard him use this both in a couple of open jams that they did uh, on stage. I don't know if it was an open jam, but just a jam that they had on stage. And it's a very cool way to take up a lot of space in a song. Basically, it's where you hit two strings. Uh, in his case, it's the high E and the B together. Now that's one thing, but if you start to take an, your first finger and play up and down the E string, you could hear some really cool sounds come together because you're playing two strings. You're going to leave the B string open as you move around on the first string and play different notes. Check this out. If you're ever writing a solo for a song or you're just jamming and you're not sure what to do, go ahead and just go to two open strings and slide up and down one of them because you're bound to get some really good sounds, some interesting clashes of notes. I'll just move, in this case I'll be on the B string while I leave the E string open. And even though I don't have a blues tone right now, you get the idea of how that could sound really great. You know, everyone, anyone from Angus Young, Steve Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, 
it's that idea of having a pedal tone, which is just a constant tone underneath everything you're doing. Uh, so you're sliding across while keeping a pedal tone going. That's if I slide on the B string, but if I slide on the E string, Okay, wah pedal rhythms. This is a lot of fun. There's a lot of songs that he uses this in, so I'm not gonna name just one. Uh, what you could do is start off with some power chords or some bar chords, and as you play them with distortion in this case, click on your wah pedal. You basically put your foot on it, push it forward, and then you hear a click. Once you hear the click, the, the pedal is on, and then you can start to get the, all the sounds. When you go forward, you get the trebly sound. Backwards, you get the bassy sound. Like that, you hear that little static in there? That's because my pedal's old and needs a little WD-40 or something. But when I'm using distortion, it doesn't really affect it too much. Let's try just some uh, basic ideas of chords with wah pedal. It's also very useful if you play high chords, like if we're going Another cool thing to do with uh, the wah pedal are octaves. So if you've ever studied octaves, in this case I'm just going to stay on the 5th string and the 3rd string, and we'll just go like 5th fret, 7th fret. Now you have to mute the string in between them. That's the kind of the secret. So what I do is I take my index finger and instead of just playing the D note in this case, I'm actually touching the string below it, the D string, just a little bit to kill it. So if you looked at the tab, it would be a fifth fret, an X in the middle, and then a seventh fret right here. All right, here's the sound of an octave if you just played it by itself. Now if I moved it around, Sounds pretty cool. Add a wah pedal. Gives it a whole other characteristic. You might be soloing and you're not really sure where you want it to go, so maybe you want to come up higher on the neck. We'll go ahead and use an octave slide as sort of an elevator to get you up to that next place. Here's an example. Sometimes you're playing here. And then you're like, oh, I want to jump up here and play this form. Well, just throw on the octave elevator, jump on the octave elevator. And you're there. It's a lot of fun. A lot of his playing revolves around the sound and compression. And if he does his solos, sometimes he'll throw on the compression and play clean sound solos like this. That wasn't one particular solo, but that was sort of the style idea I was going for. Uh, you could tell like the notes that should have really stuck out and hit you hard in the face didn't because the compression came in and saved the day. So you're allowed to play things like this. And not have to worry about like peaking the system or blowing your amp up. So you might want to invest in a compression pedal uh, if you're going for that Frusciante sound. It really helps for like funk stuff too. So if I use... You can see how it really saves you there too. Uh, that way you could pick harder, you don't have to worry so much and it kind of frees you up to go crazy a little bit. Not to mention with compression you get a little bit better sustain. See, it just sort of lets it sing a little bit more. So uh, this is not an ad for a compressor uh, pedal or compression pedal, but uh, I would say definitely have one in your arsenal if you want to start to play like him. Okay, this will be fun. Uh, I got a fuzz pedal from New New Devices. Uh, they're one of the companies that are building me these custom pedals and they're making them available for everybody. So I'll be doing a little example video of that in the future, but I want you to know I'm using their fuzz pedal in this case. 
I noticed a lot of John soloing and playing is very crazy and erratic. And like I said before, it's very explosive and it basically comes out and hits you in the face, which you got to do sometimes. And a lot of that has to do with having the right effects and sounds. I hear a lot of fuzz in his playing. So when I started to study some of his solos, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to break out the fuzz pedal and try it with this stuff. In this case, I'm using fuzz and phase. Not sure that he uses those two in combination all the time, but I wanted to show you the end of a particular song. He does what's called a motif. And how I've come to learn what a motif is, is just a phrase that you repeat over and over again to sort of build up a solo. And around that motif, you could do other things if you want to, but the motif itself remains uh, a constant. Oops, fuzz pedal. So let's say that's the motif, okay? Hear the purple haze in that a little bit? All right, so I'm just gonna do that and then I'm just gonna play something else, but I'm gonna keep coming back to that motif, very important. Funk strumming, what I usually mean is a lot of left hand muting. Your right hand's very important, of course, but your left hand has to be able to kill all the strings that you don't want to make sounds, okay? It's not like you're gonna take your right hand and really only play one string at a time. Usually with funk strumming, you have to go across multiple strings. So it's important to learn how to mute everything except for the desired note. So in this case, what I wanna do is a very basic concept, but I'm just gonna play the note in between, somewhere in between, so in this case, the fourth string, seventh fret, let's say, to start off with. Go ahead and play that note. Simple enough. Now, if you were to play all the strings, it would sound like that. You don't want that, you just want the one note to sound. So what do we do? We have to start killing strings, unfortunately. So let's take the ring finger, and instead of just playing the note, we're gonna to touch the string below it to kill it a little bit. So we get the good note, and then underneath it, we get a dead G string. After that, you still have a bunch of strings to worry about, right? So we're gonna to start to bring our other fingers into the mix a little bit. So my index finger comes down and barely touches the other two strings, the first and second strings. My thumb comes over the top and touches the sixth string and the fifth string. So there's a lot going on right here. Sometimes I don't even know how my left hand's muting everything. I'm just glad it's doing it by itself. But to test it, you're gonna play all the strings one at a time and only the fourth string should make a sound. Here we go. Dead, dead. Those are a little bit harmonics uh, that are coming out. Those are little harmonics coming out, not a big deal. The fourth string, good. Then three dead strings. So besides those little harmonics, which are normal because you're touching the string just like you would for natural harmonics, you're going to get this. That's your goal. Everything's dead except for the ring finger. Now you might get something like this and hear a couple live notes. You basically have to either touch the string more or not as much to kill the strings. It's a very strange balancing act that you have to play to kill the string. So what I like to do then is keep that hand position, play and move around. Sounds like I have the tiger. Okay, so anyways. Now a lot of people ask me, why do you want to hit all six strings? Why not just go? Well, it's because we're not gonna be playing like that in a little bit. We're gonna be playing very rhythmically. And that's why you have to really control the chaos around that note. So watch this. Okay, I cheated a little bit. I went to my first finger, but I kept the muting happening around it and back to my ring finger. That was gonna be my next thing I showed you, but I just did. So I'm basically you know, using multiple fingers now, but I'm still keeping that muting idea all around it. With that knowledge, I can move to other strings and have the same concept. Now you might find you don't have very good right hand rhythm yet. If that's the case, I recommend you mute all the strings and just for like a straight week, play along to every song like this. It's gonna sound like Voodoo Child or something at a wah pedal.
Okay, so if you keep that concept going, pretty soon your rhythms will feel better, and then you can start adding the notes afterwards. All right, then from there, we can add the wah pedal, like I said. And a lot of cool things come out of that. Um, that's the technique, though, for funk strumming. All right, in all these videos, I always end up talking about rock cliches, uh, lead guitar cliches, and they're cliches for a reason, because they sound really good, and they're useful, and they take up a lot of space in a good way, and they're very musical. So this is the one that I hear Frusciante use a lot, and it comes back to old kiss licks, I think, is what I like to think of it as. That's where we go. I'll just play it slow, clean. Let's say on the third string, we have the 14th fret. Bend it up, whole step. And then across the next two strings, we're gonna do the 12th fret and the 12th fret. Followed by a pull off on the second string, 15 to 12. That's the circular sound that you should be getting after a while. I don't care how you pick it. You could just pick everything alternating. But I do this thing where I push the pick through. It's basically economy picking. And I'll go down, 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 and then just an upstroke on the second string pull off. So that's my little secret for that lick. Um, now it takes a while to make that go fast. So just start off very slow, obviously like every lead technique and build your way up slowly. I'm gonna add distortion and wah pedal. And as I get going faster and faster, you're gonna start to hear the John Frusciante influence come through hopefully. All right, so with distortion. With wah. Is that crazy that can sound? Sometimes he even leaves his wah pedal completely forward. That's not even as crazy as it usually gets sometimes with his fuzz pedals and stuff. So that was some chaotic picking at the end there, but you can see that if you throw it in there and add wah pedal, it just sounds like extreme chaos, which is sometimes very cool to do. One thing that can't be stated and overstated enough are his, his ability to uh, bend notes very uh, much with feeling, very soulfully. And this could take a long time. I always tell people that whenever you develop your bends, it might sound very unfeeling at first and very sterile. But over time, you know, uh, maybe if you have some pain in your life <laughs> as you grow up, you start to incorporate all the pain and all the longings in your life into your playing. And pretty soon your bending just has a different kind of feel to it. Like you can actually portray your feel through the, through the technique. So if I were to play a bend of how I used to bend when I first started guitar, it's kind of annoying and I don't know, it does, has no feel. This is basically what it sounded like. That's how I used to bend. So I really wasn't putting my feel into it. I was basically just trying to do the physical technique. So if you listen to John Frusciante play, his bends are always full of expression. So to do that, you'll have a combination of vibrato, you'll have a combination of a couple different things, uh, some things you can't even really put into words. It's just the emotion that you can portray. So now when I do bends, there's a lot more to it, and uh, I can't overstate, like I said, the importance of having good feel when you're doing anything that's you know, resembling John Frusciante's playing. So let me go ahead and do a little bit of uh, bends for you here. More in a feeling style now. One thing that I thought I invented just because I had a spazzy foot one night was the erratic wah pedal uh, trick. And it's basically where you just do the wah pedal, but you do it really fast as you play. My wah pedal is really old. It has like this weird static whenever I get to a certain point in it. So you might hear that. But if you really go crazy with your foot, 
you can make some really cool sounds uh, with with some lead techniques. So check this out. That one's pretty tough because you gotta find that perfect balance point and then just shake your foot like that. All right, this is a really cool sound. If you've ever heard Give It Away, in the middle there's like a backwards guitar sound. And what I like about it is one of my pedals has a backwards mode and whenever I play with it engaged, I never really know what's gonna come out. I mean, I sort of do, but the backwards effect really kind of spins it so you it keeps you on your toes. So I'm gonna engage it here. I'm gonna use a little distortion and I'm just gonna show you as I play, it takes a couple seconds, but then it comes back and loops around. So it's almost unpredictable in a really cool way. So I'll just mess around a little bit. Okay, awkward ending.